Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel and hopefully the final video on the transit. So in the last video, I actually went to go and get it MOT'd right at the last minute before the end of the video. But the MOT tester that we use not too far from here for the class seven stuff actually went on a stag do to Tenerife and uh, his flight got canceled. So he's stuck there, he can't get back. So I've booked it in somewhere new Let's head straight there, see how we get the on. The only place I could get an MOT for today was this place over on the Medway City Estate, the test centre. And what's really, really interesting... Guys, can you read that? Only pay if your vehicle passes its MOT. Well, I've never, ever seen that anywhere. But the number I called was like a London number, so I guess these are just part of a load of MOT garages that does that but it give it a good run. Hopefully, fingers crossed, it turns out all right. Let's see how we get I've on. I've never used that MOT station before and they was absolutely spot on, guys. So you see that little bit of video I've done now, I highly recommend it. And don't forget, if your car don't pass, you ain't got to pay, which is, that's a new one on me. It's not as cheap as what we normally get, but it is what it is. It's got an MOT. Let's head back to the yard because I know Chris wants to crack straight on and get this one done. Quite a lot of you, a few of you did notice this in the video, but it was always the plan anyway. It's actually been under something quite low there and damaged the edge of the roof. It is quite hard to see because it's bright today and we're out in the sun, but we want to get that done and we want to get this van completely finished and tidied up. Chris has built a bit of a concoction there, got the basket on the front of the machine and I'm just going to lift him up just so that he's at the right height. Got the dent puller, got the power. Pretty much getting everything ready now so he can crack straight on with it. But the plan is to get as much of that out as he can and then do the repair work on it. And you'll probably be doing a bit of paint work on that, Chris, right? Chris will paint that one. So it's not a Rolls Royce, is it? But right up there, I'm sure he'll make a lovely job of it anyway. So straight into it, guys, here. I, can, I believe Chris is using a bit of 180 on a DA disc there, just getting as much of that paint off around the damage as he can. And then you'll see here, he moves on to the dent puller, see if he can manipulate some of it out with that, and then moves on. Where there's still a little bit of paint in that crease, you can see he got the little finger file in there to get the rest of the paint out. Carries on with a dent puller, getting the edge out there and then moves on to the actual pins on the new dent puller. You can see he's sticking them all on there. Then you have to wind the little heads on. He gets the little handheld puller, tries manipulating out. Well, does get quite a bit of it out with that. And then moves on to the slightly bigger guns to actually pull it up nice and equal right across where it's quite big there. He does finish it off with the little metal dent puller that we got, the yellow machine. He's definitely been hard at it while I've been gone there, guys. I actually popped out to pick the wheels up for the Infinity. But you've definitely got the shape there, Chris. Yeah. But um, he was using the little dent puller, the yellow one. And where it was in that crease, he did say it was quite difficult and they kept popping out. So he's actually got the new bit of kit out and that world them studs on there. That's, that's fantastic, yeah. isn't it? The only downside of those is where this... We've shown this before, I, mean, I haven't got a mic on there. But this is so simple to let me to buzz on. Yeah. Slide hammer, break off, move real quick. That's a bit of a longer process. So I, I stopped time lapsing because it, it, it'd just be too long otherwise. Welding the stud on, screwing on the pulling loop. Yeah. Giving it a little tug out, loop off, next stud. So We've got numerous loops, as you can see. I've dropped a few. Yeah, that's all right. But, um, and you can reuse all of these. Yeah, yeah. But you can't reuse the studs, you, you can you? You can't, no. The studs have got a... Probably can't see, Rob, because these are all used. Yeah, just put one in the palm of my hand. But the new ones have got a little tiny... Uh, for want of a better word, like a nipple sticks up in the middle. Which right. Which is the contact. So when you touch that on there and pull the trigger, it goes in there. That's what makes the... Uh, the Welds pond. it on. Yeah, and one, once that's gone, they don't seem to like welding back on. Right. Can I well, see it on that one? In the middle? Uh, oh, yeah. A little yeah, tiny, you can. tiny upstand. Well, well done, mate. We'll let you carry on, get the rest of that out, and then uh, get it cleaned up. Straight in with a filler. 
over all the damage. Chris is quite an artist when it comes to the filler. He never knocks up way too much. He gets just about the right amount. You do have to hit it a couple of times quite often, but he does get it about right, and you can see there he's got the shape. Very nice day to be doing it in today, but Chris said it is hard going in this heat. He's had to put his sunglasses on. But I should think that filler will probably go off a little bit quicker where it's so warm out here, and especially being up there on the roof. Chris is just eating his lunch, going to let that completely harden off, and then he's going to crack straight on with shaping it up, knocking it back, and getting it ready for some primer shape. Straight in, rubbing it down with a bit of 80, taking the edges off, getting the shape there, and then he'll move on to the 180 to get, get all the lines and imperfections out of it, and then go over it with a bit of fine before he actually hits it with the primer. Looks lovely. As usual, guys, Chris has made a lovely job of that. We know that you're not going to see it up that high, but he still wants it as perfect as if it was a quarter panel on a car. So it's just fettling that off, no doubt. Get that, in, get that in some primer, but I've been floating around all day. I now need to move on and actually get these stickers off. Thankfully, though, because this has been parked in the sun all day, I'm kind of hoping that they really have softened up. We got those little plastic blades, haven't we? Actually, guys, I'll show you one. So they're ultimately plastic Stanley blades, and then you can get them behind the sticker, push down, it doesn't mark any of the paintwork. I'd recommend some of the auction companies actually getting these rather than use Stanley knives. The state of some of the vehicles, you can see it's left none of the glue on there either. So let's crack on and actually get all of these stickers off. Unfortunately, we can't do any cleaning or polishing because Chris is going to be doing some painting and of course silicons ruin any paintwork so we'll have to save that till last let's get on with it this is so satisfying to do guys for the first minute and then it actually becomes quite soul destroying I've done it so many times you do get on with it but when you get ones like that there an email address and every single letter is tough to get off they're quite small you can't quite get a grip underneath them so I've just done the worst first got straight into it and got that off and you can see the bigger letters come off lovely they come off in one piece there's no breaking and it is easy but I know a lot of you have got different ways of doing it, but this is the way I've done it. It was in direct sunlight, and as you can see, it all come off there perfect. That's the back all done, guys, and what we've actually decided to do is leave them chevrons on there. Ultimately, all these big vans have them chevrons on them, don't they? So the new owner can decide whether they want to pull them off or not. They should be a lot easier to pull off than the stickers because I think the whole green is a wrap, and then the red is over the top of the green, so should be quite easy to get off that and then of course you don't all want to watch me do this side so camera trick and there we go all done i did try and use the heat gun on this one just to make them a little bit easier but as you can see it was leaving the glue on it was far easier doing it dry with that um with the little orange blades so much better this van's actually lovely i think it's going to clean up really really nice it's still got that nice bright white shine to it as well a lot of these vans go really dull so quite excited to get this one all polished up i can't take any more stickers off for the minute because chris is around the other side and he's still doing his little bit of work there so we'll leave him to it once he's finished we'll crack on get him off the bonnet and the last few off the back quarter, the other side. Time to go off all night. It was a lovely evening. So a bit of guide coat on there. And that is ready to flat off and actually start painting. You're never gonna tell that that's actually been repaired, guys, are you? Chris got so much of that actually removed, the damage anyway. Skimmer filler in there and it's absolutely perfect. So we are gonna leave him to carry on with that. And I am gonna carry on with the rest of the stickers but like i said in that previous bit i'm not going to bore you with it i'm going to get on with this bit here on the front of the bonnet and i'm going to wait till chris is completely finished before i tackle that quarter we're getting there with this one i can see the end the end is near let's get on with it just went around with a little bit of thinners i know a lot of you do always say what thinners do you use just standard thinners any thinners i do and also you can use probably not advisable but you can use anything solvent really like petrol to actually get that sticker residue off. That's off, I got that off as well. 
all of the stickers and the residue is off the bonnet. So just gonna need a little bit of a mop. And Chris has got that completely flatted off and ready to go. So this is the last piece of the puzzle. Three, two, one, and it's done. So can't, like I said earlier, I can't get on and get that polished. Chris has got that all flatted off, ready to go. The paint should be here in a minute. He's gonna crack on, get that mast up, get that done. And as soon as that's dry, we can continue on and actually get this van finished. I know the side skirt, and you would call it a side skirt, wouldn't you? Because I guess that's exactly what that is. It's not attached to the doors, is it? No, there is a few broken clips in that, as you can see, and it was like that when we got it. And this cap's actually missing, but Chris did say we have got it somewhere. It come with it up there on the windscreen, you can see there. So we'll put some new clips in that, get that fitted and carry on with it but starting to look very very nice and tidy now well i hope you're proud of that mate because yeah, right, that looks really really good obviously you can see there is a slight difference there and there but yeah, it's got like a very slight gray that's bluey tinge hasn't it that paint yeah but then that is dull and so is that there that's so right. i think once i've got up there and spun that up with a mop that look how nice that looks about them stickers on it now yeah. Yeah. That's really going to do someone well, a turn. Van, isn't it? Very straight. I did replace them clips off camera and then bits of plastic. You did on the other side. I don't know if you want to show it. Oh, yes. I don't know if it showed up on camera anyway. This was actually hanging off and I did yeah. mention it. So you've changed all the clips on that yeah. now. And around the side. That, that plastic bit was in the cab. Yeah, I meant, I'll be honest with you, you weren't in shot yesterday. I did mention that that yeah. was side skirt was hanging off that and that was hanging off, yeah. Paints a bit of thinners on it, doesn't it? It's got a... Yeah, a little bit of paint. Bit of but this is going to tidy up nice. All of this, you can see it is all in the paint, but all that will come off. And, this will, and that's just where workmen have been getting in and out of it, isn't it? Yeah. But overall, really, really happy with this one. And it's actually turned out a lot quicker than... I actually expected it to. That's a new engine. It's it's going to be good to go, isn't it? Yep. Let's crack on and get it all cleaned up. Vehicle detailers all turn off now. Guys, I don't propose to be a professional. I've got the little Sealy battery mop, bit of G3 on there. We Obviously, we had the van washed, so it is all clean. And you can see up on the roof there, I've got the cutting compound and some water. And I do use quite a bit of water because I don't want to burn through the paint and I am not a professional. But let's try and get, we've parked it around here in the shade. Let's try and get this side cleaned up, get rid of all of that residue from the writing where the actual shiny bits underneath that you can see where the van's been bleached. And obviously that hasn't because the stickers have been on there. But we're going to start on this post here and see how we get on. So concentrating on that post and I can see the shine coming straight into it. Guys, the sunglasses are not for fashion. When you're outside in the bright sunlight and you're mopping any vehicle, I think sunglasses should be a requirement. You do need them on. It's so bright out there. But you can see the shine coming up on there. There is a little bit of, you can see the splashes coming off in the background there. And that is purely down to me using quite a bit of water. I did say I'll use a lot because I don't want to burn through the paint and cause any damage. So like I said, before I started that, I don't proclaim to be a professional. I've just got a little bit better and better at it over the years. I guess practice makes perfect, doesn't it? But guys, you can't see any of that writing anywhere that writing was on there. And look at the shine on it now. We are parked in the shade, obviously. We've parked it around this way. I don't want to work in direct sunlight. But if we do a little comparison up close, obviously this quarter has been done. This door hasn't been touched. And you can see clearly the difference there all the way up this really has come up very very nice it feels nice to rub with your hand over the back of it and when you go on that you can hear it's that is actually a bit of polish on there to be fair but i am just going to continue on get that door uh get that side loading door get that front door done and of course that little piece of roof but that's got a lovely shine on it and couldn't be happier with it right let's carry on so all looking lovely on that quarter panel. You can see the shine on it compared to the bit I'm doing at the moment. But instantly, as soon as you hit it with that mop, the smallest pass, and you can see it is all shining up. 
the awkward bits are on the ladder. Once you come down off the ladder, it's very, very straightforward to do, and you can see exactly where you're going. Up high like that is always difficult. And that is the whole side done. The battery went flat there on the um, on the mop, guys. So I've just chucked that on charge. I'm gonna get it turned around. It's probably gonna take a good hour, hour and a half to charge up. And then I shall crack on with the other side. But I think you'd agree, that looks absolutely fantastic. Perfect, just how we want it to look. Let's get it turned around. And do you know what? I'll spare you the other side. I'll just get it done. I won't film any of it. Luckily, because we're not taking these off, we have just got these two panels to do, so they'll be fairly simple to do. And then hopefully, you can actually see that in the camera. You can still see where the writing was on the panels there. So going into the number, see it there, guys. And all that is, where the stickers have been on, obviously it's still quite shiny underneath the stickers, and then the rest of it's gone quite matte. So I'll get the whole rest of this side done, get the bonnet done, back doors done. Should be able to get most of that out. And then I think job is a good one. Guys, how lovely does that look? There is a bit of noise in the background. Chris is having a lot of hedges and stuff cut today and right around the perimeter. So they're getting that done. In fact, let's cut until he's moved down the revs down there for a minute. So we have got a minute, guys. How lovely did that van come out? Unless I pointed it out to you, you wouldn't even know that Chris had painted that. The color is very, very close. You can see a slight difference, but this is a 2015 work van, and I don't think for a minute that would bother anyone. But very, very nice. I have uh, washed the seats, so the two um, passenger seats are actually drying at the moment. Back doors all come up lovely. And right down this side, very, very nice as well. You can see both seat bases are out. And that one over there has been cleaned. So I'm just leaving the doors open, letting the air flow through. And you can probably just about see in the background, hanging off the little ramp, both seat bases there drawing. I'll leave them out all day, they'll be fine. I'm just going to chuck that battery. Um, now it's got a new battery in it. Chuck this strap on there, chuck the cover over the top. And I think job is a good one. Oh, yeah. Guys, a couple of people did notice that front tyre was a bit slack in both videos. And it did keep going down. I whipped over A2 tyres. You can see it's got a brand new front tyre on there. It's not worth messing around with it. It was quite old anyway. So that is it, guys. All done. Let's go inside. Everyone's favourite bit. And see how well we did out of it. Let's crunch the numbers. So first of all, nice warm welcome to all the new subscribers. Seem to have picked up quite a few in the last few videos. And of course, thank you to all the subscribers for the continued support on the channel guys let's get down to the most important part to us and i know you guys love it as well so quite a lot of you guessed right in the first video how much we did pay for that van it was in fact 2500 pound so well done to everyone that did get that right the engine from phoenix engineering worked out 1400 pound the parts now, when I say parts, this is mechanical. So you've got your oil, your filters, um, the gasket sets, everything we bought for that new engine because we renewed everything while it was off. All the inlet gaskets, exhaust gaskets, auxiliary belt, oils, filters, fluids, everything was changed. And the parts come to £250. The new injector, which I actually had to buy because ultimately that one injector caused the problem on the last engine was 80 pound that wasn't um that wasn't from buying it from an injector company guys i found a chap on ebay that had two brand new ones surplus to requirement i think he he rebuilt a van and only used two of them so he charged me 80 pound for one injector which was lovely the injector testing for the other injectors were 15 pound each so 45 quid paint and materials 60 pound so we only had a quarter of a litre of paint there and obviously a bit of filler a bit of primer and some other little bits and pieces masking tape 60 quid brand new tire we had fitted it is a budget tire but run of the mill 69 pound mot now we use that new mot place and it was 55 pounds so a little bit dearer than normal but they fitted me in there and then and i loved that whole 
no pass, no pay. So ultimately, if it fails, you just take it back and then take it for a retest and then pay them, which was brilliant. Uh, Valet, I've got £50 down here because the first one was £20 and the one I went for this morning was actually 30 because where I mopped it, there was just white splatter and dots everywhere, including all over the windows. I then got them to go right round it with a bumper gel. They bladed the uh, little bit of overspray off on the side window that wasn't relevant to us. It had come from somewhere else. And they actually washed all three seats for us. So £50 for that. I did just flick through Auto Trader and eBay, and the nearest one I can find to it, there's a lot out there with over 200,000 on them, and they're on there for around six, seven grand. But the nearest one I could find to it had done 140, and it's on there for 8,995, so 9,000 quid, and that's a garage selling it. We've got a total price, what that van owes us, is £4,509, which is brilliant. It's a lovely, lovely van, all done, all singing, all dancing for that money. We're going to ask £7,500 for it, so £1,500 cheaper than what the other one's asking for. And I know a lot of you are going to say, why do you ask less for it? Yours is a more sorted van, etc., etc. Guys, we sell our van, we sell all of our vehicles at trade price, and we don't, they don't hang around. Nothing you see is hanging around here that we've previously done on the channel. As fast as we get them done, I test drive them. We put them up for a reasonable price, leaving enough in it for the next man, and they're out the door. That is going to give us a pre-tax profit of £2,991. And that is a very healthy profit for the company. And we're, we're happy with that. We are happy with nearly £3,000 profit out of that vehicle. You can't do that every day, can you? And I wish you could. So that is the end of today's video. That is the end of the series on the full transit. I know a lot of you are going to start messaging me saying I'll have that. Guys, it will not be for sale until I list it on Instagram for sale. I even get a lot of people messaging me saying, well, tell me what day and what time it's going to go on. But we don't make a, t a time and a day. It is completely at random. I'll say, oh, actually, I'll chuck that van out for sale. But I'm going to run it for a little while, really run it in, because it is a new engine, isn't it? It's got new rings in it. It's got new shells in it. I'll just do a few miles in it, and I'll be putting that one up for sale on Instagram. Hopefully, one of you guys want it, and hopefully, one of you guys buy it. Don't forget, if you want to follow us on Instagram, it's Selvage Rebuilds. If you want to follow Chris on his personal Instagram, it's Selvage Rebuilds Chris. Don't forget, like, subscribe, and share. Thank you all again for the uh, support and the lovely comments. And we'll see you very, very soon in the next one.